In today's lesson, we're going to talk about blues notes at the piano. It sounds like this. Or. Right, so you can get some real cool sounds. So let's break this down. Before I do break it down though, if you have not already signed up, you want to get all of these uh, tips d uh, delivered directly to your email box, just go to pianoandwillie.com slash November and sign up for this webinar. It's absolutely free. You get them all throughout the month of November and I will send you out the replays and the sheet music that I'm about to show you all via email. Just add my email address wm at jazzedge.com to your email list. All right, so we're going to start here with these blues notes, all right, and then uh, you will get this uh, sheet music email to you, all right. So you first of all see here we have just our regular tones of our C7 chord. So this would be the root, this is the third, this is the fifth, and that's the seventh, okay. Then we have these in here, these blues notes. And so basically those are the tones of your C7 chord, your C dominant seventh chord. Okay. The blues notes is the flatted third up to the natural third, the flatted fifth up to the uh, natural fifth or sharp uh, four up to five. Okay, and then you can also do this um, um, uh, uh, root down in the major seventh down in the flatted seventh. So let me play each of those. I'm just going to play a root three seven down here in the left hand, so I can get. And notice what I'm doing is I'm playing the chord and playing this. Uh, I'm starting on that C, so I'm starting right here, okay, when I'm playing that. Whoops, sorry. So I end up hitting that B flat a little bit afterwards there. I could also do this. See, I could like play the chord along with the B flat, or. So when I play that grace note, I play the chord at the same time, and I'm sliding with the same finger, okay? Now these blues notes come from uh, a mimic mimicking of the guitar strings, right, doing this kind of stuff, right? So it's like kind of bending of the guitar string, but now we can't do that on the piano, well, except for that thing, okay? So we usually do this. Notice that we get some like grit there as well, so I'm, I'm pulling down with that middle finger, and I pull down and I stick on that E like that. Now, can I go up to the C? Sure, I could do that. Can I go down to the G flat? Eh, it doesn't really sound all that well, right? Not to say that you can't do it, but it's just going to be a little bit more tricky to work with that. All right, so I have a couple of examples here for you. Uh, first example here. So you'll notice what I'm doing here is these are the grace notes. So I'm going from the sharp two up to the third. I can play that F up there or down here, okay? Now I can move on to my G chord as well, right? On the G chord, remember there's, there's my sharp two or flat three up to the natural third. So I could create an entire blues song just by going from that grace note to the natural third down to the root. Up to the G, back to the F, back to C. Now, we don't have to do it as a grace note, okay? We can do it as a melodic note. But before I show you that, let's also talk about, you know, I just did the uh, flatted third up to, up to the uh, third. What about the sharp four up to the fifth? Could I do that? Sure. Now, one question that students have a lot of times is, can I use different fingers? So can I use like my fourth finger up to my, or middle finger up to my fourth finger? You can, but it kind of loses a little bit of that grit, doesn't it? So you gotta like work a little extra hard. So that's why a lot of times I'll use the same finger like that. You know? 
See, I can combine them. Now here on the F, when I go to the sharp four to the five, obviously I can't use the same finger because I can't slide from a white note to a, no a white note like that. So that's where I'm gonna have to use different fingers. Now you might find that your fingers start to slip around when, when you're doing this kind of stuff. It's absolutely fine, right? And your fingers will get used to it. It might take you a couple of weeks to really just kind of get used to that. But give yourself some time with that. You want to try and get as relaxed as possible with that. Now, where do these grace notes come in is when you're improvising or you're playing a blues or you're, you know, even just playing a melody and, you know, sometimes you can like... See, I can like bring in stuff like that, kind of get a country feel. Isn't that kind of cool? And then here, all I'm doing is I'm bringing in that grace note, and I'm also adding in my ninth. That's a little bit of an advanced tip for you, right? A little bit of an advanced tip for you, but if you're an advanced level player, you could try doing that. It's a great sound. It's kind of like that Floyd Kramer sound. I have a whole lesson on Floyd Kramer at the Piano and Willie site as well. Right? So if you like that sound. All right, so anyway. That's our grace note example. All right, so let's move on to our melodic notes now. So we can also do something like this. Look at what I'm doing here. I have the third. I have the, uh, well, let's call that flat three instead. Flat three, back to the third, to flat three, to third, to fifth, to root. Okay? So I have this now. So you notice that I'm not playing it as a grace note anymore. Now I'm bringing it in as a melody note. So, so you see how I can bring in that down to the flat at seventh? I haven't done that one before, right? Now there I'm playing, I'm improvising using just those roots, thirds, and fifths, and those grace notes. And I brought in a little bit of that uh, to the flat at seventh as well. So you want to be very comfortable being able to move in between each of those three chords. So let me give you an exercise that you can practice. The very first thing you could do is just try playing that root seven in the left hand and just try doing the root third fifth for each of these chords, the C, the F, and the G. Move freely between them. Can you move from C back to G? Now, once you can do that, now try adding in that flatted three um, grace note. So again, what I'm doing here is I'm playing the root in the seventh for C. I'll play it down here, down an octave. It's a little bit low, but I'll play it a little bit lower just so you can see. Actually, I'll do this. I'll play it there. I'll play the melody up here. So I'm going to that flat at third, okay? And I go to the flat at third, to the third, to the fifth, to the root. Then I move to the F, and I move to the G. Now, what you notice is that when I say the flat at third to the third, to the fifth to the root, okay, that's on each chord. So I do that same pattern when I move to the F chord. All right, so don't get confused thinking it's the third of the key or something like that. You know, it's, oh, wait, wait, the third is E, so why am I playing an A over here? It's because I'm thinking of it siloed on that F chord. Now I'm thinking about the F chord, and I'm saying, okay, well now on that F chord, I could be playing that grace note, all right, and the third, and the fifth, and the root. Now you might be also thinking to yourself, well, wait a second, 
I thought that I could just use the blues scale for all three chords in the blues. So I thought I could just use my C blues scale, then that would work over all of the chords in a blues. You're absolutely right. You can use that blues scale over all of the chords in the blues, but that's one option available to you. Another option is that you can use your chord tones and use your grace notes and approach notes. Right? We haven't really talked about approach notes, but grace notes, right? this stuff, these blues notes, over each of the chord tones. But when you're thinking about your chord tones, chord tones refer to each individual chord. Okay? The blues scale, you can use over all three chords of the blues, but when you're thinking about improvising using chord tones, you're going to think about the chord tones for each chord that you're on. Or you can also think of it as the chord of the moment. What chord are you on at this particular moment? If you're on the G chord, well, those are the notes of your G chord, right? Well, those, right? That's just a double, right? So. Now, once you can do the root three, uh, the root third fifth, the, the, the grace note to the third and the fifth, now you want to just start to get loose with this stuff. So see if you can just like. See how I'm just like moving in between each of those chords? I'm just trying to get nice and free and fluid with it. Now, if you want, you can come up with your own exercise and say, all right, let me do it. So there I'm going fifth to the flatted fifth, back to the fifth, flatted third to the root, okay? I'm sorry. So the goal here for today in this lesson is just to get comfortable on those grace notes. Now I just did C, F, and G. Obviously, you can move into many other keys as well. There are still uh, many other chords that you can uh, use those grace notes on. Now, can I use the grace notes on major chords or minor chords? Yes, you can, but for right now, since we're kind of like in this bluesy realm, stick with your dominant seventh chord. So if you want some good chords to move to next, try moving to like B flat seven and an E flat, right? What about D? See, now there on D, you can't slide from the flat three up to the third. So it's gonna be a little bit different there. A, you're gonna to have to use two fingers there, okay, in order to get to the third of that A. So each key is gonna be different, right? Um, uh, not every key is going to be the same. And what you're gonna notice is that certain keys you're going to enjoy playing the blues in because they fit in the fingers a little bit better for those grace notes, okay? If you take a look at players like Floyd Kramer or Jerry Lee Lewis, you'll notice a lot of times they played in the key of C because that key works really well for pianists playing the blues, okay? So anyway, last thing I want to show you is that you can also combine these together. Now here, I was able to go and play uh, the flatted three and the flatted fifth up to the third and the fifth. But now when I go to F, that's not going to work so well, right? Because that just feels weird in the fingers. So instead, I just play the fifth and I just move from the flatted third up to the third. I could do the same thing on the C as well. Move from the flatted third up to the third and forget that whole flatted fifth thing. Remember down here in the left hand, I'm just playing a chord shell that's just the root and the seventh of the chord. Okay, so you got some stuff to practice here uh, tonight. I will be back with you tomorrow with another live lesson. Now, if you're wondering, hey, wait a second, this is only like a what, like a 15-minute lesson here. You know, why aren't these longer? Because I want these lessons to be short so that it's not too much material for you to try and take in all at once. Trust me, there's going to be a lot of material. Now, I want to remind you, if you want to get the recordings of all of these lessons, they will be provided to you absolutely free of charge 
um, as we go along. And at the end, I'm also going to be setting up a page. I'm going to put all the videos or all the links or something. Uh, uh, but all of this material will be on one page that you will be able to access, right? And you will be able to get access to all of that material. So if you want that material, you have to make sure that you are on my email list and that you are opening my emails, okay? If you don't open my emails, then you won't end up getting access to this. And in fact, I'm going to be pruning my email list. So if you're not opening my emails, you will end up getting off of my email list. And then all of these future trainings you will not have access to. So I hope that that doesn't happen because I like to keep working with you. So just all you need to do is make sure that you're registered for the web for the webinar. If you're getting an email saying that you're registered, then you're all set. If you haven't registered, just go to pianowithwilly.com slash November, all right, and then click on the button there to register. And then the next thing to do is just make sure that you're opening up my emails. Add my email address, wm at jazzedge.com to your email, um, uh, to your email uh, uh, client list, all right, and, or drag it to the primary box, and then I will see you in tomorrow's lesson. I will be sending out a schedule so you know which lessons are going to be coming, but tomorrow we're going to continue with a little bit more blue stuff, right, and that, that schedule will get put together very soon, and you will have that in your email box as well. All right, so hey, thanks a lot, guys. Take care. I look forward to seeing you soon.